Problem number three is y equals negative x squared plus four. Plus four, right? Okay. Uh, what's my a value? Negative one. What's my b value? No. Remember, B is attached to X. Where's my X value? Zero. It's not there. And my C value is four. Is that okay? Which value up there tells me the direction it opens, up or down? A. A is negative, so does it open up or down? Opens down. When I say down, it's going to look something like that. Okay? Uh, use negative b over 2a to find the coordinates of the vertex. Okay, so for part b, so this is answer a. For part b, we're going to use negative b over 2a, and then we'll plug that in to find our y value. Okay, what is my b value? 0 over 2 times negative 1. What is negative 0 over negative 2? What? 0. So my x component is 0. What do I need to do with my x component to find my y component? Plug it back in. So I'm going to take 0, plug it in right here. So I'm going to get y equals negative times 0 squared plus 4. 0 squared, 0. Negative 0, 0. 0 plus 4? 4. That's my vertex. OK? Find the equation of the axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry. Ideas? Yes. Good. It's the x component. x equals 0 is a vertical line. A vertical line has an undefined slope. Right? The axis of symmetry. Remember, the axis of symmetry is the line that's vertical that I can fold the parabola over on top of. It has to go right through the vertex, which is the highest and low point. Find any roots. Okay. So I found, let's see, down. Find any roots. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. Let's see. Can I find any roots? Let's do. Hmm. You know what this is, kind of in disguise? They are perfect squares. It's the difference of two squares. And I want you to think about it this way. This is going to look a little awkward for a second. Could I rewrite this to be 4 minus x squared? Yeah, negative x squared is minus x squared, yes? Plus 4 is there. <laughs> So if I were to factor this out, I'd get 2 plus x and 2 minus x. Is that okay to do? Can I change the order? Yeah. Okay. So if to find the roots, I'm going to set each of these equal to 0. So I get 2 plus x equals 0. Subtract 2. So x is equal to negative 2. And then this one, 2 minus x equals 0. So negative x equals negative 2. So x equals what? x equals 2. All right. So I do have some roots. That's where it's going to cross the x-axis. Agree? Complete the table of values centered at the vertex. Sketch the graph. OK. So let's make ourselves a table. I have x. I have y. My vertex is going to be here. My vertex, we said, was 0, 4. Okay. So one number to the right of 0 is 1. One number to the left is negative 1. These should give us the exact same value. One number to the right of 1. One number to the left of negative 1. Okay. So the 1 and negative 1 should give us the same y value. The 2 and the negative 2 should give us the same y value because we know a parabola is symmetric about the vertex. 
I'm going to take those values. I'm going to plug it into the original. So I have y equals negative. Okay, let's plug 1 in here. 1 squared. 1, negative 1, right? Negative 1 plus 4. 3. This is 3. This is also 3. Let's take 2, plug it in here. 2 squared. 4. Negative 4, right? Negative 4 plus 4. And that should be the same. Oh, these are our roots. So if I graph it, it's going to look like 0, 4. Got a vertex right there. And then I have 1, 3, and negative 1, 3. And then 2, 0, negative 2, 0. And I could keep going from there if I wanted to. But eventually, let's see, uh, Wednesday we'll learn a way that's called pattern graphing. And it works with parabolas very well, but we're not there yet. So we create a table. We know my axis of symmetry does this. It's a vertical line right here. So you should draw it in. It can be dotted if you want. Uh, the vertex, just label it 0, 4. And yes, you can label those if you wanted to. You could label all the points if you wanted to, but if you're doing it on grid paper, it should come out nicely. So number three, it's a parabola that opens upside down. We did some ways on it and a factor in it. We realized different two squares we could rewrite as a different way. So that's problem number three. Problem number four. Can I move off this? Problem number four. Guys and girls, I hope you're writing this down with this and jotting any notes off to the side because I don't pick these up. These could easily be notes for you. Okay. Um, let's do our ABCs. Our A value is negative 3. My B value is 12. My C value is negative 10. Okay. And we're not using the C value at this point, but we will eventually get to what that is. Okay. All right. Uh, Information up there should tell us the direction it opens, up or down. What do you think? Down. Why is that? Negative three where? This value is negative, so this is going to tell us it's going to open down. So the parabola is going to look like that. Okay? Hmm. Then we're going to do, oh, we're going to find the vertex. <clears throat> Finding the vertex, so... I'm going to do negative b over 2a, and then I'm going to plug that into y. So negative b, so I get negative 12 over 2a, comma y, because I haven't found the y yet. Negative 12 over negative 6. What's negative 12 over negative 6? Negative 12 over negative 6 is? 2. Isn't it positive 2? Negative over negative is positive. What am I going to do with this 2 to find the y component? Yeah, I plug it into all the x's up here. Okay, so I'm going to get negative 3, 2 squared, plus 12 times 2, minus 7. 2 squared is 4. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Uh, plus 24, minus 7. So negative 12 plus 24 is 12. 12 minus 7 is 5. So I have a vertex at 2, comma, 5. What do you think? Can I do that? Do I have enough information for the axis of symmetry? What is the axis of symmetry? What is it? X equals 2. Axis of symmetry is what kind of line? Vertical. So X equals 2 is my axis of symmetry. Remember, that's the line that is symmetric. It's the mirror. The line's going to fold it over. Okay. What else do we have? Uh, find any roots. Oh, okay. Let's find some roots. So that means I'm going to factor it. Um, so I have negative 3x squared plus 12x minus 7 equals 0. No greatest common factor. 3, 12, and 7 don't have any numbers in common. So what am I going to do to figure out my... Um, 
Negative 3 and negative 7, that gives me positive 21. In order for that to be negative, I need to have alternating signs. The factors of 21 are 1 and 21, 3 and 7. Is there any way I can combine those together, one being positive, one being negative, to come up with 12? No. So follow me on this. My vertex, I go right to a 5. You see that, where we're going? If I go right to an up 5, and the parabola opens down because my a value is negative, is it going to cross the x-axis? Yes. So I want you to think about this. I'm just going to draw this quick. Here's my vertex, 2, 5. It opens down, so this is what my parabola is doing. It crosses there and there. So it can't be factored, but it does cross the x-axis. So is it possible to cross the x-axis at some decimal that we can't really get to because it's huge? Yeah, what was a decimal that can't be written as a fraction called? Pi is something like that, yes. What's the term? What's the fancy term? Irrational, good. Irrational. So this has irrational roots. They do exist, but they could be crossing the x and the y axis at like square root of 7 and square root of negative 5 or something like that, or negative square root of 5 or something like that. That's very possible. It's just we don't know exactly where they cross. They do indeed exist. Okay? Um, it's just that we can't find them at this point. Find any roots? Well, they're irrational roots. Uh, complete the table. Okay, so I have a vertex at 2, 5. So I'm going to go over one more board. My vertex is at 2, 5. Okay, so one number to the right of 2 is, one number to the left of 2 is, 1. One number to the right of 3 is, one number to the left of 0 is, of those values up there, which two are going to be equal? One goes with what? Three. And zero goes with? Does that make sense? All right. So I'm going to take those values. I'm going to plug it into the original. My original was negative 3x squared. Plus 12x. What is it? Minus 7. Perfect. Okay, let's try and plug these values in. Um, let's plug 1 in. 1 and 3 will give us the same answer, but 1 seems easier. Uh, 1 squared is? 1 squared is? It's 1. Negative 3 times 1? Negative 3. Uh, 12 times 1? 12 times 1? 12 minus 7. Um, negative 3 plus 12 is 9. 9 minus 7 is? 2. This gives me a 2. This also gives me a 2. Okay. What looks easier to plug in, 0 or 4? Zero. 0. 0, absolutely. If I plug 0 in right here, what do I get right here? The whole thing comes out to 0. If I plug 0 in here, what does this become? 0. 0. zero. And then? 0 plus 0 minus 7 is? Negative 7. Negative 7. Okay. That makes sense how we just did that? Do you see how it's symmetric about the vertex? All right, one more board. Let's see what we can do. Let's graph this. I'm at 2, 5. What did I do? Huh? OK. Uh, axis of symmetry is x equals 2. So I could draw, if I wanted a dotted line, I could make it a solid line. It's not really part of the graph. It's just showing that you have symmetry. Uh, let's see. 1, 2. So 1, 2 is here. And 3, 2 is here. Yes. And then 0, negative 7. And that's 2, that's 5. Uh, 4.
touch him anymore. Okay. Guys and girls, can you see that this crosses the x-axis? Yes. Yes. It crosses somewhere around here, and it crosses somewhere in here. Okay. Do I know exactly where? No. Do I know approximately where? Yes. You will see it, a way to find it. it what you'll find out when the answer comes down to is it has a square root of a number that's not a perfect square. And the square root of a number that's not a perfect square comes out to be an irrational number. And if you add an irrational number to a rational number, it stays irrational. Okay? Feel good? All right. Um, I wanted to go back over... Um, I wanted to go over the back page of the notes, and I realized some of you might have misplaced the back page of your notes, so I made a copy. Does anybody in this row need a back page of the notes? Back page of the notes? This is the back page. Remember, how I didn't do a back page. Do anyone in this row need one? Anybody in this row need one? Back page to that? No? Okay. Need one? No? Good? Good? Yeah, it looks just like that. That's exactly it. Can you ever get me it? Sure. Who needs it? Get one for me. Okay, you can have an extra one. It's extra. Extra copy. <coughs> okay. It's the back page of the one that we did the other day. Oh, I have one. Oh, then you got an extra page to hang out with. All right. The back side of these notes. Okay? Back side of these notes. Let's finish these up. Okay. Um, I have a parabola on there, so I want you to Let's see if that really good. Let's do Let's say this is the parabola that's drawn. This vertex is at negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the vertex is at negative 3, 4. Now again, I'm just making this one up, so you should draw this on that sheet. Okay? By just looking at this graph, it opens down. So what value is negative of our standard form? A. A. A is a negative value. Do I know exactly what A is equal to at this point? No, but I know it's negative. And the reason I know it's negative is because the parabola opens downward. A is the only value of the whole parabola that's going to tell you whether it opens up or down. None of the other values being positive or negative are going to tell you. So just looking at this problem, I can say that I know that my A value has to be negative. Okay? And again, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's going to happen. Um, would you feel that this problem could have been factored to solve? Could I have factored this problem? A little critical thinking here. Could I have factored this to solve and get an answer? Ray says yes. I agree with Ray. Ray, what's sticking out there to make tell you that I could factor this problem? Yeah, because these two points, I bubble on this point here is negative 2, 0, and this point here is negative 4, 0. Being they happen on the x-axis, this means I could have factored my problem. 
Again, I don't know exactly what the problem would have been, but I know that I could have factored it. Okay, so th that's just some of the critical thinking. And I know it's not asking on these notes, could it be factored or not? Um, so what is the axis of symmetry of this graph? Axis symmetry is what? Good. X equals negative 3. The axis of symmetry is always the X component of the vertex. If you drew it in, it's going to look like this. It could be a dotted line. It could be a solid line. It's your choice. That's the axis of symmetry. I can fold it over that. Okay? So it says, what is the axis of symmetry? We have that. What is the vertex? Oh, by looking at that graph, we're going to talk about the maximums and the minimums. The maximums and the minimums are the y components of certain parts of this. Does this graph have a maximum value or a minimum value? It has one of those. Which one is it? Maximum. Maximum. What is my maximum y value you think I have on this problem? Four. Four. So my maximum is 4, okay? That's as high as it went. What is the minimum? Where do you think y is going to? Your ID and I need your phone. Please. Where is the minimum value going? Minimum infinity. Does that make sense? In the y direction, I'm going downward forever and ever and ever and ever. I'm going to negative infinity. My maximum, my highest y value I'll ever get to on this problem is going to be 4. My minimum value is going to be negative infinity. Maximum, 4, minimum. So if the parabola opened upward, where would I go? Infinity if it opened upward. Okay? Infinity if I opened upward. Where is the graph decreasing? And we want to write that in something called interval notation. And where is the graph increasing? Increasing means I'm going up. Where does it appear I'm going up? Where does it appear I'm going up? So am I coming up here? Am I coming up? What do you think? Am I coming up? Okay. Am I going down? <laughs> Thanks. Wrong frame. I'm going down there. Coming up, I'm going down. Right over on this side is where I am increasing. Okay? I'm increasing. If I were going in the x direction, if I was way over here in the x direction, where is way over here in the x direction going to be? Infinity? Negative infinity. Okay, so from negative infinity, negative infinity to what x value do you think I'm increasing? x value. Watch your x value. Negative 3. So from negative infinity to negative 3, and I'm using it as parentheses, meaning I'm approaching it on both sides. Okay, I'm not going to equal it. 
So from negative infinity in the x direction to negative 3 in the x direction, my graph itself is increasing. Okay? Meaning my y values are going from negative infinity all the way up to 4. Okay, hang on. i got to clarify that real quick. So where it's talking about increasing, you're talking about an x value. Where you're talking about a maximum, you're looking for a y value. Wait a minute. This is crazy. Where I'm looking at a minimum. These are both, both of these are y values. But when you're talking about increasing and decreasing, you're looking at the x values, what they're doing. So this particular graph, I'm starting from this point where my point of my pen is. And I'm going to go forever this way. And what's going to happen to me? Are my y values getting smaller and smaller and smaller as I go out to the right? Or are they getting bigger? My x values are getting bigger. What's happening to my y values? So if I go this way, is my graph going downward? Or is my graph going upward? Think about your y values. I'm going down, so I'm getting smaller. Okay. So from the point negative 3 to negative infinity, my graph is decreasing. My x values, when I'm doing that, is going to give me a result of my y values being a smaller and smaller and smaller number. So going to the left, as far as I can go, that had my graph increasing. Going to the right, as far as I can go, that has my graph decreasing. So my graph from negative infinity, so way out there, beyond the burrito joint that's over there that everyone loves, Rico's, keep going for infinity. Okay? As I come in closer to my vertex, the graph itself is increasing. As I get to my vertex and I continue to positive infinity, so you go way beyond the reservoir, way behind, beyond Kansas and all the other states that way. My graph is decreasing. Okay? Increasing and decreasing deals with the x component. Maximum and minimum deal with the y component. That would be something I would definitely write down. So, max and min, that's your y values. Okay? Increasing and decreasing are your x values. Hmm. Did I cover everything there? The vertex? So what's going on with the vertex? The vertex is where your parabola changes direction. It either goes from coming to a decreasing to an increasing or an increasing to a decreasing. It changes your direction of your parabola. Okay, so I would like, down at the bottom is what the homework is. It says homework is worksheet graphing quadratic functions number two, which is page 41 and 42. Okay, now Schoology has two more quizzes. It has six and seven that are on there. Six and seven that are on there. Bonus one, two, three, and four, and five were due this past Friday. So six and seven are due this Friday. So I want to give you guys the opportunity to work on this. Guys, there's 14 minutes left, 13 minutes left in the class. If you need to take a picture of this sheet, please take a picture. I'll put it in the basket to put it in the back. Okay? Guys and girls, when I come by and check out homework, say I don't have a book yet. But you took a picture of it. Casey, you have my permission. We don't have a book to take pictures of the camera, but I can put it back so you can do it later, okay? Or, or you have a book. Oh, perfect. Thanks.